during the last part of the Cretaceous. Greater Yellowstone was home to the most recognizable dinosaurs, and lots of them. Alongside T. rex, Triceratops, with its three horns and flamboyant neck frill, grazed ancient Montana for millions of years. It thrived here, until the mass extinction that wiped out all of the supersized dinosaurs. Triceratops took its last breath on land that today is famous for its spectacular geology that hides its prehistoric past from all but the experts. It captures the ecosystem of the dinosaurs just before the extinction event. We probably have more Triceratops that have been pulled out of the ground than anywhere else in the world. The greatest numbers are from Montana, the Dakotas, and Wyoming. Now, a discovery in Montana reveals surprising new details about the beast that's been described as a placid, prehistoric tank. Not too far from this particular specimen, there are a number of other specimens that represent other animals just within, you know, a few hundred meters. One of these animals was a massive T-Rex. And the predator's skull showed deep holes that were only partly healed. Was Triceratops equipped to defend itself and possibly even attack its enemies? Scientists are digging deep into the daily life of this 30-foot-long plant lover that grazed ancient Yellowstone, hoping to find answers to pieces of the fossil puzzle that haven't quite added up until now. The Yellowstone region didn't look like this 66 million years ago. The Absaroka, Gallatin, and Teton mountain ranges hadn't yet appeared. So Triceratops wandered through lush forests and plains where vegetation was plentiful. It would look more like modern day Louisiana with crocodiles around and, and there'd be lots of river channels and palm-like trees and it would be warmer. Dr. John Scanella is one of the world's experts on Triceratops. And he leads expeditions from the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana. While T. rex looms large in many people's vision of North American dinosaurs, John has always been fascinated by the carnivore's favorite prey. If you're looking at a Triceratops, probably the first thing you'll notice is the horns. It has giant horns above its eyes and then a, another horn above its nose. At the front of its face, it has a parrot-like beak, but it also has teeth uh, in its jaws. And then at the back of its skull, it has this long, bony frill. And then behind that, it's a, a quadrupedal animal, so it walks on all fours, and then there's a, a tail at the end of it. So it really looks like a combination of um, animals today, but really unlike anything around today. Most reconstructions of Triceratops show it fleeing its mortal enemy, Tyrannosaurus rex, or dying on the prehistoric landscape in the aftermath of the deadly asteroid. Scientists have discovered numerous Triceratops remains in the Hell Creek Formation in the far north of the Greater Yellowstone area, at least compared to the fossils of other dinosaurs. The Triceratops is the most commonly found dinosaur out here. One of the reasons is that a lot of the bones are extremely thick and dense. They've lasted many millions of years, and they've sustained all sorts of movement through rivers and channels and rocks falling on them and so on. Another reason is that they were probably common animals on the landscape. They were herbivores, so there were many of them kind of like cows on the landscape here today. Yellowstone isn't just famous for its geysers and wildlife. The region is a fossil treasure trove. Many features of present-day Yellowstone stem from the Pliocene, about 10 million years ago. At that time, the entire region, including the Rocky Mountain chain, was being slowly uplifted by giant earth movements to heights several thousand feet above its previous level. 60 million years earlier, in the Cretaceous, the flatter, more gentle landscape was the perfect place to be a dinosaur. 
a lot of different people that have worked out here and built up our fossil collections, our geological record. Without those people, we couldn't bring all of this together to be able to tell a story about Triceratops or a dinosaur. Dr. Greg Wilson Mantia focuses on the evolution and ecology of animals during major events in Earth's history. Despite the large number of individual Triceratops that have been uncovered, the scientists don't believe the creature traveled in herds. There have been fewer than we'd hoped for examples of multiple individuals of Triceratops found together. So we would predict that they would perhaps die together, maybe they were herding animals, we think. So we'd expect to find that in the fossil record, and so far we haven't. And it's unclear why. It may be that we have it wrong. Maybe they weren't herding animals, they were more solitary. The most they've found together is three. In other horned dinosaurs, there have been huge bone beds of some horned dinosaurs, suggesting dozens, if not hundreds, of these horned dinosaurs, perhaps in a herd moving together. So far, that hasn't been found for Triceratops. It's relatively easy for paleontologists to identify a Triceratops in the field. Even in a place like Greater Yellowstone, where so many dinosaurs once roamed, the horned head was enormous and distinctive. It made up one third of the entire length of the dinosaur's body, with some skulls being over seven feet long. Triceratops was one of the largest horned dinosaurs with one of the largest skulls of any land animal to ever live. With so many specimens to compare, John's been able to see that the shape of the Triceratops skull changed over the few million years that it roamed the late Cretaceous, around 65 million years ago. He's been working to solve the mystery of why this happened for years. The earliest Triceratops, those that lived longest ago, show small horns above their noses. Then the horns become larger and larger in fossils found closer to the mass extinction, or KPG boundary, which marked the end of all the dinosaurs. Currently, there are two recognized species of Triceratops. Current evidence suggests that these two species of Triceratops did not live at the same time, but instead were separated in time. And as we explore the Hell Creek Formation, we find that Triceratops horridus, with the little nose horn, is typically found lower in the Hell Creek Formation, whereas Triceratops porcis, with the big nose horn, is found higher up. And so it looks like horridus might have evolved directly into porcis over time. This is a process called anagenesis, or transformational evolution. It's where one species, over time, transforms into a new species, without branching out into two distinct species, sharing a common ancestor. Triceratops shows a remarkable physical metamorphosis during the two to three million years it was alive. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding the number of species of Triceratops and related genera. And one of the, the great things about building up a large collection of Triceratops skulls and other elements of Triceratops has been that we are able to really tease apart that problem and test that hypothesis. And in the process of comparing these skulls, what we've started to notice is that maybe there were two different species of Triceratops. John Scanella's team has also found fossils that clearly show the changes from when they were youngsters to becoming senior citizens of the Greater Yellowstone Cretaceous. So far, the smallest known specimen of Triceratops has a skull about yay big, which is still fairly large. So what it looked like before that point in growth is almost completely unknown. We have a series of, of Triceratops skulls from very early babies that are no bigger than the size of a, a pit bull dog, all the way up to the ones that are one to two and a half times the size of a rhino. So we can study how it changed from a baby to an adult, and also how it changed over the course of the end of the Cretaceous period. 